you've had quite the journey from being a track star and 4.3 speed to now making go of it in the NFL. Yeah. What motivated you to leave track and make a run at being an NFL player? Yeah, I think, I think that it was the initial dream that I, something that I always wanted to do when I was a kid. Um, and then it kind of ended much before I really wanted to because I wanted to play in college and then I used up all of my eligibility. And I mean, there was only a couple options pro. Um, I was either coming to the CFL or doing one of those other things or going to the NFL. And luckily, um, I kind of got a good break the first time around after pro day running that 4-3-3 and getting a chance to go to Seattle and then just kind of been sticking around and hanging on until I finally got my um, chance this past year to get on the active roster. So that, that, that was kind of it, that, that initial dream and that love and that passion for football more, more than track and field for me. You know, I eventually fell in love with track and field while I was in college you know, um, learning like what it was really all about, making those connections. And that's what really made me like track and field a lot. You mentioned the CFL as a possible option and I'm from Toronto. So that got my ears going. I'm like, Oh, CFL. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, know. I, I did my research on you guys a little bit. I, can hear <laughs> the so I'm like, I know I'm talking to one of my Canadian brothers. <laughs> <laughs> now, Seattle, New Orleans, was it Chicago before Tampa? But you've had a couple different it's camps. A it's couple. Been a journey. What's that like? Like, was each stop uh, a reason for optimism? Was it frustrating? What was that like having what I view opportunities? Yeah, um, and I, I think that's exactly how I looked at it as well as opportunities in each one of those spots. Obviously with everything in life, you know, it's, sometimes it's emotional. Um, sometimes it's those hard no's that's, you know, hurt more than the other ones. And then sometimes it's, uh, no, it's not gonna work out, but you have some hope, so it motivates you. And um, it's definitely a lot of praying, a lot of talking to yourself during the journey, a lot of leaning on those people around you and having them push boost you forward and just a lot of self-belief as well um definitely not the journey that you want to have um when you first get in there you want to go first round you want to know you have a solid spot you want to be a day one starter you want to know that you're going to be a pro bowl and that's the way that you dream it when you're a kid but then as everything is in life you know you learn that everything doesn't go as planned but if there's a destination just like the GPS, um, sometimes you might take a turn and then it says that you have to, you added 17 minutes to your trip. But at the end of the day, there's a destination that has to, um, that we have to get to. And I think that's, that's my outlook on it. There's a destination. Um, and every time you get somewhere, you know, you might have to put the GPS on to get somewhere further, you know, and I think that's me right now. Um, I finally, you know, my GPS finally got me to the point where I'm in Tampa Bay and now I'm active on the active roster. Now that GPS, you know, kind of, um, okay, now that I'm here, now I need to get, you know, to a starting five. Now I need to, I'm a starting 11. And now I need to get to a Pro Bowl. And now I need to be all pro. And now I need to be, you know, a Hall of Famer. And um, that, that's, that's kind of the journey, just chasing greatness in every step of that way. Um, but embracing the whole journey and remembering where I came from and knowing that, you know, in other people's minds that, you know, I'm not even supposed to be here, you know, um, and um, some people that's going to doubt me and, you know, adding all of this, these wood chips to my fire that I have under me, you know, so that I can ultimately be a rocket, you know, once that rocket shoot. And then, you know, where we need to be. I just scared my dog. <laughs> so do those uh, do those doubters help fuel you when you're doing those sweaty workouts? Like I see on your Instagram, you're just killing it in the gym. Does that give a little good chip on your shoulder, perhaps? Yeah, um, I like the negative hype sometimes, you know. Um, 
I don't I don't take anything negatively um, and I don't take things personal reading the four agreements um, I'm I don't take it personal but obviously with anybody if anybody you know says that you can't I think that it's a pride thing that it tells you no yes I can um, <laughs> and then it, it, it does feel good when you actually achieve those goals but it's more so my fuel is more so actually like within my family, um, my my girlfriend, my kid, you know, that's on the way in. That that's what really fuels me and that's what keeps me going as hard as I go, um, stand on top of things. You mentioned praying earlier and I think your faith is a part of your life. How has your faith helped you through these challenges and how has your faith grown through these challenges with all these different NFL teams before landing in Tampa? Yeah, you, you definitely um, start to lean on your prayer life. Uh, and I think that it's amazing. Um, when I look at it, when things get all the way down to um, the bone, when it's like, okay, and, you know, those prayers start to get harder and, you know, um, the bank account might get low sometimes. Every single time, something happens, and I'm like, this got to be God, you know. Um, and so that strengthens my faith um, every single time, and it just lets me know. God kind of wants us to be, to me, in this point where we know, like, he's good, with being where he is, but he don't want us to feel like we don't need him, right? So um, whenever, you know, I kind of get too high maybe sometimes, and that's rare, I'm pretty <laughs> humble. Uh, but it's whenever I start to get on a high horse, you know, sometimes I do get humbled. But um, also finding people in, in different locker rooms and just finding out how many people um, – are um, the same faith Christian like me. Um, and so it's just really cool. Um, and all those people help me on my journey. I take things from every place I go and grow in that way. And, and then just using the game as a platform, you know, um, for me and my faith. Um, so I think that that is it's cool. I've grown a lot. Speaking of cool, last game of last season, you had your first NFL catch yeah. you were on the field after that. I made that catch or in the locker room or even just thinking about it since what kind of thoughts after all the hard work and all the perseverance you've had to get to this point, what does that catch symbolize and what does it mean to you? Yeah. Um, I, I think that it just means like a dream actually um, realizing, you know, coming into fruition. Um, but in the moment, I couldn't think about it because in that same play, I got hit so hard. <laughs> I, I mean, but it was you know, worth it, I'm sure. Yeah, um, and the hit didn't actually hurt. Um, it was more like once I got up, you know, I started running to the sideline, and I'm, you know, like, man, like, what's going on? And I'm thinking it's going to be something like, you know, you have like a little ankle roll and you eventually run it off. Um, but I actually like tore – um, my abs during that um, play. Ouch. So I, the game plan, you know, was set up really well. I was supposed to get a lot of action. And, like, I went in a couple more plays thinking that it was just going to be okay. Um, but I, I couldn't really finish the game how I wanted to. And that's what was on my mind <laughs> for a while, you know. And now I'm just like, Man, I, I could have had so many other opportunities and stuff like that. Um, but still, that catch was a, a good moment, a big moment um, in my career for me now up until this point because people play a lot of different games. They, that was my second active game. Um, people play a lot of games and never get any targets, never get any catches. Um, so that was, that was um, amazing. Man. I didn't expect to get the ball. It was kind of like, Okay, we were in a rush. It was third down. Um, so I caught the ball, and I'm like, okay, let me try to make a play. And before I can even turn my head up the field, you know, that safety was coming down and smoking. Um, but 
it was a good moment. <laughs> <laughs> Jameis Winston was QB1 from most of last season, former number one draft pick. Right. Now you have a new quarterback who I feel is the GOAT. You have Tom Brady. You have Gronk coming to help with the offense. Is looking like it's going to be a real pass-heavy offense with, again, who I think the greatest of all time quarterback. I know that Brady's asked for contacts for a bunch of uh, teammates. Has he got a hold of you? And or what are your thoughts on Tom Brady being a new quarterback for the Bucks? Yeah, that's, that's all. I, I haven't got my phone call yet. Um, but that's okay. Um, we'll get in contact and get things rolling. He'll reach out soon. It, yeah, yeah, we'll get we'll get together t- soon. I know that he's a great teammate. Um, just from hearing from other guys that's been in the Patriots organization and me kind of doing my research in that um way. So I'm just super excited about being around the goat mind, even more so. Even in field, field sessions you know, um, and team meetings, yeah. all that kind of good stuff. Right. It's just amazing. When you when when you get around those type of guys, you know, um, there's a couple geniuses, you know, um, in the league. And, I mean, Drew Brees is one of them. Sean Payton is one of them. You know, Bruce Arians is one of them. Um, and those guys, I've been around, and they can, you know, just draw some stuff up in the dirt. And you see Drew Brees sometimes working. and He's in the huddle and nobody else is around and he's visualizing 21 other players. And I'm just excited to see like how um, Tom works and how he grinds. And I'm just excited to be a part of that offense. And hopefully if, you know, Gronk gets an extra guy over him and Mike gets an extra guy over him and Chris gets an extra guy over him. He'll get some open looks. Yeah. And then, you know, however it works. You know, I'm just, I'm no, honestly, I just want to play my part and help this team go as far as we can go, which we're looking forward to a playoff berth and, you know, get to the Super Bowl and just go as far as we can. Um, and during this time, we're all working together virtually for that common goal. And that's what I'm thinking about as well um, as I'm working out every day. I'm thinking about those guys once we all get back in Tampa you know, how I want to present myself as a polished guy, strong, in shape. And right now I'm actually feeling like I'm in the best shape of my life. So um, I'm just excited about what's going to happen with the head um, from the coach to Tom Brady to everybody else that's going to be leading this team. And I just want to play my part. I hope you stay healthy. I hope the team and you have a great season. And I hope you're playing in Tampa Super Bowl week because that, that'd be a great thing for that city yeah, that, who's hosting it anyway to be having their home team playing the Super Bowl. I hope that for you and Tom yeah. Brady and, and all your teammates. For sure.